You shall cross the barren deserts 
But you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in forests, and all will understand. You shall see. If you pass through raging waters in the sea, you shall not drown. If you walk amidst the burning flames, you shall not be harmed. If you stand before In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you all. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. And you're very welcome to the church here in Denor um, for this very sad occasion uh, when we've gathered, you have gathered as a family, the community outside the door there, uh, who have gathered to say farewell and to return thanks to Almighty God for Rose. And even though you had her for a long time, uh, no amount of time can ever prepare us for that moment when we have to say goodbye and take our farewell of a parent, particularly a mother. So as a family, uh, this community will be thinking of you and praying for you during these times, particularly you, Johnny and Mickey, Paddy and Kathleen, her children. But I know that on this, the day of her funeral, when you've come to return her to God, you do so with thankful hearts because of all that she has given you and all that she has done for you and all that she has been for you. So your prayers now and your memories of your mother, you gather them with the prayers that I'll say here and we'll offer them up as one huge prayer of thanks to God for this wonderful and lovely life. And then those most important people in any uh, grandparent's life, her grandchildren, we are mindful of them. And as they are young, as she was old, they look now to the future and to the long lives that is spread out before them. Please God, those lives will be lived following her example and her goodness and her faith. And so at the beginning of this Mass, when we do that, when we commend her to God, let us ask the forgiveness of God for the times when we have failed in the way in which we deal with one another. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us all our sins, 
and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who are mercy for sinners and the happiness of your saints, give, we pray, to Rose, for whom today we perform the fraternal offices of burial, a share with your chosen ones in the blessedness you give, so that on that day of resurrection, freed from the bonds of mortality, she may come before your face. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now, and we listen to the Word of God, and today uh, Rosemary is going to read for us. <clears throat> A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the mourning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth. For the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, see this our God in who we have hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, I'll not want. He second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise and glory to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Praise and glory to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. <clears throat> the Lord be with you all. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatever you ask of God, he will grant you. Your brother, said Jesus to her, will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though they die, they will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? 
Yes, Lord, she said. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come into this world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just be seated there for a minute. I um, suppose, not I suppose, I know uh, that when we as people need others most, particularly at the time of a funeral, when we need the support of friends and family, when we need neighbours, uh, these are the most awful times because they are the very things that we cannot have. And it makes these occasions, particularly funerals, all the more dreadful. In Ireland, uh, and I would have heard it said, you know, we, above all countries on the earth, we do funerals well, and we do. We honour our dead. We pray for them every first Friday. We remember them during November, and we celebrate their lives enthusiastically, if somewhat painfully, on the occasion of their deaths. But we do it, and we've always done it, and in these times we're prevented, and it is painful. But I'd like to welcome all of those people who are trying to be with you, those who have taken time out from the busyness of their lives and who are sitting in their cars or watching on their phones or in their sitting rooms or in their kitchens, watching this funeral mass for Rose and joining with you in that way, trying to support you and praying with you and praying for you. And I suppose people are doing that all over the place, in every part of this country and probably in countries beyond. So we welcome them, all of them, and we thank them for the efforts that they have made. And last night I was just looking at her death notice there on RIP when I was um, just printing it off for myself. And then I went down and I went into the condolence section at the bottom, which I'm sure you've done. And so many people had taken the time to write a small note of condolence and sympathy. Almost every one of them spoke about her as a lady. I think that word was used over and over and over again. They talked about her as a lady. And certainly when Mickey and Jason came in to see me the other day and make arrangements for today, they spoke about her in that way too. But that was only natural because you knew her so well. But Father Mead and Father Gnud, speaking to me over the last few days, spoke about her in similar terms. They also talked about her faith, a woman of great faith. And that faith was practiced here in the church. And I chose that gospel today for her funeral mass. I chose it with intent. Jesus said to a woman once, a good friend of his called Martha, whose brother had died. He said, I am the resurrection and the life if anyone comes to me, they will live even though they die. And whoever lives and believes in me shall not die. Do you believe that? And she said, yes, Lord, I believe that. She was the first one to say it. And today we come along, and this is now the next in the line. Rose Lawler said that over and over again. Yes, Lord, I believe that. She believed in the resurrection. That's what brought her here to this church, her belief in the resurrection, her hope in the new life that God would, would provide for her when this life is over. And she has gone into that, that life. She's gone into that life because of her faith, but also the manner in which she lived her life. She was a hard-working woman, and she worked hard because she had to work hard. She had to work hard to provide for her family and to give you and to set you out on the life that you now enjoy. We would be nothing, none of us, none of us, Pope nor Prince, we would be nothing if it weren't for the efforts that were made for us by our parents. And so today, as I said at the beginning of Mass, 
Johnny and Mickey and Paddy, Kathleen. This is an opportunity for you to join all of those memories and thoughts and reasons to be thankful, to offer them now to Almighty God as the most powerful prayers for this most wonderful person that you had the privilege of calling Mother. She loved her fashion. She was a woman who presented herself well and liked to do so because she had an inner pride, a pride in herself and in her achievements, not proud or haughty, but that self-satisfaction that comes from knowing that she has done things and done things well. So let us, I suppose, look into our own lives and realize that all of us have been given that God-given self-same opportunity to use the opportunities that we've been given and to use them well, as she did. Mickey was telling me about the turkeys and about all of that. She reminded me of my own mother who did rare turkeys too, not on the scale to which Rose reared them. But uh, I'm telling you, there is nothing easy about that type of work. But she did it, and she did it with a purpose, and that was to provide for her family. I know, Johnny, you're going to bring up a small uh, wee uh, flower, a primrose, which came from her house over at Cullen. And it's an important symbol that we will be brought to the altar in a few moments' time. Is there one of us when we're driving the roads at this time of the year and we see a hedge or an old bank and peering out of it is a small little clump of yellow primroses. Does not any of us have a quickening of our heart realizing there it is, there is the first sign of spring. The winter is now over and spring has come and there the primroses are here once again. It's a good analogy for all of us. It's a symbol of hope. It's a symbol of new life. It's a symbol of rebirth. And that's what this is. This is not the end. This is not the end. There is a new birth, a new life, a resurrection that she hoped in, that she believed in. And now, as sure as that primrose has come again, that she shares in with God in heaven. That's the reward of her faith. That's the reward of a good life, a life well lived is a life to be lived for all eternity in the happiness and peace with God in heaven. So we pray that Rose is there and that she has peace, that she's now with Paddy, with Hugh and with all of those who have gone before her, whom she has known and loved. We pray that in that place she has eternal peace. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Like I said there a few times, the Mass offers us the opportunity to reflect on her life, to thank God for that life, and to pray for the lives that are left behind. And so Leighton, I know, is going to lead us now in a few short prayers of the faithful, commending her to God, to his love, to his peace, and to her family, that they too will have some peace. So let us stand as we pray now, as Leighton leads us in prayer. Pray for Rose who has died. May God now welcome her into his heavenly home of eternal happiness and peace. We pray Lord hear us. Lord gracious see us. We pray for the relatives of her and friends of Rose, especially her husband Paddy and her sons and daughter, Johnny, Michael, Paddy and Kathleen, grandchildren, great grandchildren, the members of her extended family, her neighbours and friends. May God fill their hearts with his comfort and consol consolidation. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. We pray for all those whose lives are dedicated to care and for the sick. In particular, we pray for our carers, Caroline and Rosemary, Father John here, doctors, nurses, chaplain, and staff of Our Lady of Lord's Hospital. 
who care for Rose during her old age. May God reward their goodness and kindness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray in thanksgiving for our neighbours and friends who have been so kind to us during the times of sadness. May God reward their kindness and bless their homes with happiness and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who have died, especially the relatives and friends of Rose who have gone before her. May God unite them all in happiness and peace of his heavenly home. Lord, Lord hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And for a few moments, just in the quiet of your own hearts, let us take the moment to remember her in those many guises of her life, working, entertaining, praying. Let us remember her in whatever way, in whatever place, and be thankful. Lord, hear us. How gracious he is. God, our Heavenly Father, hear these prayers which we offer you now in faith, these and all of them we make through Christ our Lord. Please be seated there just for a moment. We've come now to the offertory of the Mass, normally where we offer the bread and wine, but at a funeral Mass, it's become traditional to offer some gifts that represent Rose's life. So the family have decided on some things. I made reference there a moment ago. Johnny will be bringing up some primroses which represent the home from which she has come, but also represents that hope that all of us entertain of new life and new spring for us all. Um, Mickey will be bringing up um, a piece of soil um, representing her love of the land, her love of farming, and her life's work, because her life was lived close to the land, on the land, and she loved the land, and it was through the land that she gave life and a life to all her family. And Kathleen will bring up a piece of clo her clothes, uh, some item of clothing, because as I mentioned there, she loved to present herself well and to show herself well. She had great pride in herself and in her achievements. And that small piece of clothing represents that. Wayne will bring her St. Bridget's Cross. Again, a reminder of her faith and the enduring faith in our country. The St. Bridget's Cross goes back to a time when we couldn't do this, when this wasn't possible, when we couldn't gather in churches, when mass and these rites were celebrated in ditches and hedges and on rocks and crosses were forbidden. But people went and they, went and they found a way to have that symbol of faith. They made it out of rushes, the poorest of of things, but for them it was a symbol of their faith. It was for her a symbol of faith, and now it is the means to eternal life for her. And Trina will be carrying up um, a cup and saucer uh, of the many cups of tea that she enjoyed herself and that she shared with people. We're reminded in the, in the, in the Bible, in the scriptures, St. Paul said, Make hospitality your special care. Make hospitality your special care. So all those welcomes that she extended to her neighbours and friends and family, represented by that cup and saucer, is also a sign of the fulfilment of her Christian calling, where she welcomed people and was hospitable to them. And she'll also bring the rosary beads, because in praying and in having that cup of tea, she was uniting herself in the most simplest way with God, her loving Father. So we will present these gifts now, if you'd like to go and get them, and I will place them here on the altar and offer them to God as a symbol of her life. Amazing grace, how sweet the sounds that
servant Rose, on whom, whose funeral day, we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, that should any stain of sin have clung to her, or any human fault have afflicted her, it may be, by your loving gift, forgiven and wiped away. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him, the hosts of angels adore your majesty and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of our faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the whole world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, with Tom, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember, Rose, whom you've called today from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. 
Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Let us remember um, her husband Paddy, stand before her. I see Hugh is also mentioned. Her parents and all those friends that have gone before her. We pray that they now are there to welcome her into the eternal life with God. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and with St. Joseph, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now let us stand and we will pray. Mindful that all of us are the children of God, we pray as Jesus our brother taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, the power, and the, the, power and the glory are yours now and, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. And may this mingling of the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the sin of the world, of have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. My dear friends, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Now the practice, uh, rather than people coming up to receive Holy Communion, it is brought down, it reduces the amount of movement in the church. But if you would like to receive Holy Communion, you can remain standing, otherwise you can be seated. And when I 
That God himself not sparing Sent him to die I scarce can take it in That on the cross My burden gladly bearing He bled and died Take away my sin Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art Then sings my soul Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, Rose may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And just before the final prayers of commendation, um, I'd like to thank the various members of the family who had a part to play in Rose's Mass today. Um, I, I often reflect, you know, it's not easy to stand as one of those things, um, particularly when you're not used to it. Um, but you've done so and you did it, and, uh, and that is obviously a clear sign of the affection which you and those whom you represent uh, hold Rose and still hold her in. Um, I'd like to thank um, Marie for the music and the singing, it was lovely, and the live streaming facility as well. And um, Johnny, for your hospitality over the last few days and for your kindness. Um, I can't thank you for your heavy hand with your Jemison, but anyway, um, <laughs> it's a sign of the hospitality that obviously is part and parcel of the house and will be continued on. And I know these days will be particularly difficult for you, but I know that you are surrounded by wonderful family and friends. Uh, who will walk this journey as far as they can, as we can with you. So we'll commend her now to Almighty God with these final few prayers as we give her now into the love and the peace of God. Trusting in God, we have prayed for Rose, and now we come to the last farewell. There is always a sadness when we take when we part, but we take comfort and hope in the knowledge that one day we shall see her again and enjoy her friendship. Although we as a congregation will leave this place in sorrow, we know that the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, we console one another with our faith in Jesus Christ. To the short responsory, we respond, receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Receive, receive her, soul her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to our aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive, Receive her, her soul. soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ who called you, Rose, take you to himself. May the angels now lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive, Receive her, her soul, soul and present, and present her, to her to God the Most, Most High. High. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive, Receive her, her soul, soul and present, and present her, to her to God the Most, God Most High. High. And now I'm just going to reverence her mortal remains. Uh, with holy water and with incense. Um, the drops of water falling on her coffin remind us of a time when, so long ago, she was brought to a church and a priest poured water upon her and Rose embarked upon a life of faith. And I spoke about it, tried to speak about it there earlier, a faith that brought her into a love of God and a love of all God's people. And so those drops of water reminds us of the drops of water that fell upon her as a little child. She was faithful to God and to her baptism throughout her life 
and now he is faithful to her. We use incense uh, to show respect for uh, she was deserving of respect in life and even as she lies in death now. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend Rose in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon her in this life. They are signs of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ Jesus. Merciful Lord, turn towards us now and listen to our prayer. Open the gates of paradise now to Rose and help us who remain here to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with Rose forever. To you, O oh Lord, now we commend her gentle soul. In the sight of this world, she has now died. In your sight, she will live forever. Forgive any sins she may have committed through human weakness and in your goodness, grant her everlasting peace. And it's in that same peace now that we'll take her body from here to its final place of rest at the cemetery adjourned. A snowflake fell from heaven the day my mama died. The angels came to greet her and to welcome her inside the skies were lined with music like i never heard before my mama reached her kingdom come and the angels close the door I'll always remember my mama how good she was to me she helped me through the good days my falls and tragedies what more could a son desire than the love of a mother's heart? I lost all sense of loving when my mama did depart. A snowflake fell from heaven the day my mama died the angels came to greet her and to welcome her inside the skies were lined with music like i never heard before my mama reached her kingdom come. 